right in this session we will discuss about venous drainage of upper limb when you are tracing arteries we have to trace from proximal to distal but when you are tracing veins we have to trace from distal to proximal right see here i have already drawn posterior aspect of upper limb and anterior aspect of upper limb to avoid time consumption that means this is posterior aspect of arm this is posterior aspect of forearm and this is dorsum of hand here anterior aspect of arm anterior aspect of forearm palm right when you are discussing venous drainage of limbs we have to discuss under two headings deep set of veins and superficial set of veins if you take deep set of veins along the arteries two veins will be running parallel to the artery so these veins what we are calling vena committens that means pair of veins running along the artery this arrangement of veins what we call vena committens right that means along the radial artery two veins along the ulnar artery two veins along the brachial artery also two veins will be present right there is no much description about the deep veins but we have to discuss in detail about the superficial veins actually superficial veins are present are running away from the pressure points that means see palm no superficial veins then ulnar border of forearm no superficial veins and posterior aspect of arm no superficial veins because it is pressure area then over the trapezius there also no superficial veins because wherever there is pressure points those areas are devoid of superficial veins okay that's what superficial veins are spiral in course actually see after formation of dorsal venous arch medial side basilic vein lateral side cephalic vein those are not running over the dorsal aspect of the forearm they are spiraling and coming to the anterior aspect to avoid pressure is it so superficial veins are running away from the pressure points that's what these veins are spiral in course now we will see what is dorsal venous arch how it will be formed and how cephalic vein will be formed how basilic vein will be formed right so dorsal venous arch will be present here all of you can observe on yourself over the dorsum of hand you can see the venous arch this venous arch what we call dorsal venous arch that will be like this this arch or this dorsal venous arch formed by three veins these veins what we call dorsal metacarpal veins that means first second third dorsal metacarpal veins united and forms dorsal venous arch right how these dorsal metacarpal veins will be formed see here this is radial side and this is ulnar side that means this is lateral side this is medial side right along the ulnar side of index finger is it this is ulnar side only this is radial side along the ulnar side of index finger and along the radial side of middle finger there will be dorsal digital veins that means this is one dorsal digital vein and this is another dorsal digital vein these two dorsal digital veins are united and form first dorsal metacarpal vein right then along the ulnar side of middle finger one dorsal digital vein along the radial side of ring finger another dorsal digital vein these two dorsal digital veins are united and form second dorsal metacarpal vein right then along the ulnar side of ring finger and along the radial side of little finger two more veins are running and form third dorsal metacarpal vein right now these dorsal metacarpal veins are united and forms dorsal venous arch so this is dorsal venous arch right so we have veins or dorsal digital veins for the ulnar side of index finger both sides of middle finger both sides of ring finger and radial side of little finger but here i didn't draw vein along the radial border of index finger both sides of thumb 
and ulnar side of little finger is it for those areas also there are dorsal digital veins see here this is the dorsal digital vein which is running along the radial side of index finger and two veins from the thumb that means from either side of the thumb one two three these three also dorsal digital veins right these dorsal digital veins are not forming dorsal metacarpal veins they are directly draining into the dorsal venous arch and one more dorsal digital vein which is running along the ulnar side of little finger right now we have veins along the both sides of the fingers right and see here this is dorsal venous arch that means this is dorsal venous arch it is having lateral end and medial end right that means this is lateral end and this is medial end lateral end of dorsal venous arch united with dorsal digital vein which is running along the radial side of index finger and dorsal digital veins which are running on either side of the thumb so these three dorsal digital veins and the lateral end of dorsal venous arch united and formed cephalic vein right so this is the formation of cephalic vein so this is the lateral end of dorsal venous arch united with dorsal digital vein of index finger and dorsal digital veins of thumb right so this is cephalic vein or preaxial vein right then how basilic vein will form this is medial end of dorsal venous arch medial end of dorsal venous arch united with dorsal digital vein which is running along the ulnar side of little finger united and form basilic vein so basilic vein is formed by medial end of dorsal venous arch and uh, dorsal digital vein which is running along the ulnar side of little finger so these two are united and forms basilic vein right now we'll see course of basilic vein course of cephalic vein see this basilic vein runs along the posterior aspect of forearm that to towards ulnar side posterior aspect of ulnar side of forearm right then below the elbow here it is elbow below the elbow it winds around the ulnar border or medial border so it winds around the medial border of forearm once it is disappeared it will be appearing here is it because it is dorsal aspect and this is ventral aspect right so it is disappearing here clear so it appears here this is the basilic vein before winding the medial border of forearm and this is the basilic vein after winding around the medial border of forearm so after winding around it will be appearing in the anterior aspect so it is appearing here and it is present in the roof of the cubital fossa right so it is present in the roof of the cubital fossa then it ascends upwards along the medial border of biceps see here biceps will be there along the medial border of biceps it runs upwards and it pierces the deep fascia at the middle of the arm and becomes deep after piercing the deep fascia it is going to become deep so it is piercing the deep fascia here and it ascends upwards up to the lower border of teres major right once it is reaches to the lower border of teres major it will be continuous as it will be continuous as axillary vein so it will be continuing as a axillary vein right but in some textbooks they will tell that at the lower border of teres major vena comitens 
or veins which are running along the brachial artery united with the cephalic vein and formed axillary vein right so actually this is basilic vein continues as a axillary vein but according to some authorities these vena comitins which are running along the brachial artery united at the lower border of teres major with what with basilic vein and form axillary vein right then this axillary vein continues as a subclavian vein right this subclavian vein united with internal jugular vein and becomes brachiocephalic vein right this brachiocephalic vein actually it is right side brachiocephalic vein so right side brachiocephalic vein united with left side brachiocephalic vein and forms superior vena cava this superior vena cava opening into the right atrium so this is the basilic vein continuing as axillary vein that axillary vein is continuing as a subclavian vein subclavian vein united with the internal jugular vein and forms the brachiocephalic vein this brachiocephalic vein united with the left side brachiocephalic vein and forms superior vena cava right so this is the tracing of basilic vein right repeating this is the medial end of dorsal vena arch this medial end of dorsal vena arch united with dorsal digital vein of little finger and formed basilic vein this basilic vein runs along the posterior aspect of the forearm that to towards ulnar border right then when it reaches to the lower part of the elbow it winds around the medial border right after winding around the medial border it becomes anterior then it will be appearing in the roof of the cubital fossa right after that it ascends upwards along the medial border of biceps when it reaches to the middle of the arm it pierces the deep fascia and becomes deep right at the lower border of teres major united with vena comitins of brachial artery and formed axillary vein right this axillary vein continues as a subclavian vein this subclavian vein and internal jugular vein united and forms brachiocephalic vein this is right side brachiocephalic vein united with left brachiocephalic vein and formed superior vena cava so that is basilic vein tracing right now we will see cephalic vein tracing here this is lateral end of dorsal venous arch united with three dorsal digital veins one vein running along the radial side of index finger and two veins running on either side of the thumb right so these three veins and lateral end of dorsal venous arch united and form cephalic vein runs in the roof of the anatomical snuff box right after running in the roof of anatomical snuff box it winds around the lateral border of lower part of forearm that means it runs up to here then it winds around and it becomes anterior is it actually it is present posterior side after passing through the anatomical snuff box then it ascends upwards when it reaches to the lower part of forearm it winds around the lateral border and it becomes anterior so from here it ascends upward right that means from the anatomical snuff box it ascends little upwards then at the distal part of forearm this is proximal part of forearm and this is distal part of forearm here at the distal part of forearm this cephalic vein winds around the lateral border now it is winding around so this continuation we cannot draw in the dorsal aspect we have to draw in the ventral aspect or anterior aspect so this continuation i will draw from here so this is cephalic vein it runs upwards and appeared in the roof of cubital fossa then it runs along the lateral border of biceps brachii this is running along the medial border and this is running along the lateral border of biceps brachii 
right? And here you must be aware of it. Here deltoid muscle is there. Here pectoralis major is there. Here there is a groove between the deltoid muscle and pectoralis major. Here pectoralis major will be there, right? Just I am drawing dotted lines, right? This area is pectoralis major, right? See. at the lower border of pectoralis major this cephalic vein will pierce the deep fascia so here this cephalic vein pierces the deep fascia that means here it is piercing the deep fascia right after piercing the deep fascia this vein that means cephalic vein enters into delto pectoral group is it see this is deltoid muscle and this is pectoralis major in between these two there is a groove that groove what we call delto pectoral groove so it runs within the delto pectoral groove right and when it reaches to the infraclavicular fossa it opens into axillary vein right so cephalic vein opening into the axillary vein right so this is how cephalic vein will be draining into the axillary vein right very simple lateral end of dorsal venous arch and dorsal digital veins of index finger and thumb united and form cephalic vein right actually it forms in the roof of anatomical snuff box only from there it ascends upwards right then at the distal part of forearm it winds around the lateral border that means it winds around the lateral border like this then it becomes anterior right in the anterior aspect of the forearm it ascends upwards okay and it appears in the roof of the cubital fossa right after that it ascends upwards along the lateral border of biceps followed by at the inferior border of pectoralis major it pierces the deep fascia right then it runs within the delto pectoral group right when it reaches to the infraclavicular fossa it pierces one more fascia and opens into axillary vein what is that fascia another fascia see here it is piercing one more fascia what is that fascia clavi pectoral fascia it pierces the clavi pectoral fascia and opening into the axillary vein right so this is about cephalic vein okay actually there will be accessory cephalic vein also occasionally present this accessory cephalic vein also opens into cephalic vein only right and one more variation here external jugular vein is there right and this is cephalic vein one vein which communicates the cephalic vein with the external jugular vein like this this cross communication between the cephalic vein and external jugular vein will be passing over the clavicle see here this cephalic vein opening into the axillary vein with the right angle that's what for the cardiac catheterization we will not use cephalic vein we will use only basilic vein why if you introduce catheter here that catheter may obstruct here because it is opening into the axillary vein with the right angle right so that's what we will use basilic vein see basilic vein is continuing as a axillary vein that to when it is going towards proximal side the diameter of vein is going on increasing so basilic vein is ideal for the cardiac catheterization but cephalic vein is not ideal for the cardiac catheterization because cephalic vein is opening into the axillary vein with right angle and one more thing is there here there is a cross communication when you introduce catheter it will go along the cephalic vein it may enter into this vein so that you will land up in the external jugular vein there is a chance of happening that also that's what 
cephalicvin is not ideal for the cardiac catheterization right then we have to discuss one more thing see along the basilic vein you can found dorsal branch of terminal part of ulnar nerve in the lower part and medial cutaneous nerve of forearm in the upper part that means along the basilic vein two nerves are accompanying one is ulnar nerve and another is medial cutaneous nerve of forearm right ulnar nerve in the lower part medial cutaneous nerve of forearm in the upper part what about cephalic vein in the lower part this vein accompanying the radial nerve in the upper part it is accompanying the lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm here it is medial cutaneous nerve here lateral cutaneous nerve right so this is about cephalic vein basilic vein course right now we will see one cross communication between the cephalic vein and basilic vein what is that cross communication 2.5 cm below the elbow it connects the cephalic vein right and 2.5 cm above the medial epicondyle it connects the basilic vein what is this vein median cubital vein this vein what we are calling median cubital vein right this median cubital vein present over the aponeurosis what is that aponeurosis is called bicipital aponeurosis what is it this is bicipital aponeurosis so this is bicipital aponeurosis right this vein is ideal for the intravenous injections because imagine here this is the median cubital vein and this is deep vein in between bicipital aponeurosis is there perforating veins from the median cubital vein pierces the bicipital aponeurosis and opens into deep veins right so what is happening here these perforating veins are piercing the bicipital aponeurosis so that this median cubital vein will not move or it will not slide over the bicipital aponeurosis because these perforating veins are acting as a ties so median cubital vein will not move over the bicipital aponeurosis so when you are piercing the needle this vein will not slide or will not move that's what median cubital vein is ideal for the intravenous injections and one more thing we can say along with this vein there is no important nerves also right so that's what this is ideal for the intravenous injections clear then one vein which is arising from the palmar venous network see this is palmar venous network from the palmar venous network one vein will be arising and it runs in front of the forearm in the median plane that's what this vein what we call median antibrachial vein this vein what we are calling median antibrachial vein this median antibrachial vein opens into median cubital vein usually so what is this vein median antibrachial vein opening into the median cubital vein right usually you can see this arrangement but termination of this vein will be vary from individual to individual imagine this is cephalic vein and this is basilic vein right and this is anti brachial vein or median anti brachial vein and here what is this vein median cubital vein right if it opens here this is common type right but in some cases instead of opening in the median cubital vein it will open in the cephalic vein 
right in some individuals instead of opening in the cephalic vein it opens into basilic vein right in some other individuals this median antibrachial vein divided into two branches like this this is median cephalic vein and this is median basilic vein so median basilic vein opens into basilic vein median cephalic vein opens into cephalic vein at the time this median cubital vein will not be present that means median cubital vein will be absent right like this m shaped appearance you can observe right so these are the variations in the termination of anti brachial vein right so this is about venous drainage now we'll discuss some applied aspects related to the venous drainage of upper limb i have already told about the median cubital vein why it is important clinically because it is ideal for the intravenous injections and cardiac catheterization also right then basilic vein is ideal for the cardiac catheterization because this vein is continuing as a axillary vein and diameter also going on increasing so this is ideal for the cardiac catheterization but cephalic vein will be used for the internal arteriovenous fistula what does it mean this operation will do in the patients of chronic renal failure for hemodialysis so what is this operation called internal arteriovenous fistula imagine this is artery and this is vein okay making communication or establishment of communication between this artery to this vein by vascular surgeons this is the internal arteriovenous communication right if they do that what will happen blood flow from the artery enters into vein is it or not through this route right so what will happen blood flow within this vein will be increased that means amount of the blood entering into the vein will be increased and pressure of the blood also will be increased so because of increased flow and pressure this vein will enlarge or it becomes larger and strong enough to permit repeated venous punctures actually in the dialysis we have to do repeated venous punctures to allow that we have to make vein stronger and larger right that's what we have to make arteriovenous fistula right because of that this vein will be enlarged okay and become strong enough to permit repeated venous punctures right so cephalic vein is ideal for that why near to this vein there will be radial artery is it so if you make communication between this radial artery and the cephalic vein it will be easier because both are nearer clear so this is the internal arteriovenous fistula so cephalic vein is ideal for the hemodialysis right so that's it about the cephalic vein basilic vein applied aspects then if you coming to the applied aspects of axillary vein here the part which is present anterior to the first part of axillary artery may be compressed because of subclavius muscle when you are doing overhead paintings that means we have to keep our limb in the overhead abducted position for longer period is it when you are doing painting to the ceiling right that time subclavius muscle may compress axillary vein which leads to thrombosis right in other conditions there may be 
one fibrous arch which is extending from the pectoralis major to the latissimus dorsi right that arch will compress the axillary vein which leads to thrombosis right so these are the few applied aspects related to the venous drainage of upper limb actually superficial veins are spiral because to avoid pressure areas or they run away from the pressure areas that's what veins from the palm will be draining into the dorsal venous arch through what through perforating veins here perforating veins will be connecting the palm to the dorsal digital veins by what by perforating veins those perforating veins are passing between the heads of metacarpals these are metacarpals so in between the heads of metacarpals these perforating veins are coming that's what those veins what we call intercapitual intercapitual veins right capit means what head right in between the heads of the metacarpals those perforating veins are connecting the palm to the dorsal veins that's what this veins what we call intercapitual veins right not only through this intercapitual veins from the palm some veins winding around the borders of the palm and opening into the dorsal venous arch right so this is about the venous drainage of upper limb i hope you understood that's it for this session